Kind of though, it's like hipsters and their parents. <laughs> in the same room. It's at, at every table. Uh, I need to wait for our next comic. He comes to us from Siena College and has performed at colleges in the area. Uh, please give a big round of applause for Colin O'Reilly. Woo! How are we doing? Happy Thursday. Happy Holy Thursday. Everybody like woke up today and they were like, yes, it's Holy Thursday, finally. <laughs> this one I invited a lot of people to this show. I was like, hey, I'm doing stand-up at the Comedy Works. It's Thursday, come on out. And they're like, it's Holy Thursday. <laughs> I didn't, I'm Catholic. I didn't even know there was anything to do today. Like, I didn't know there was an obligation. Lent's funny. Lent is funny because it's like the Catholic second version of the New Year's resolution. Like, New Year's resolution goes by, you're like, I'm going to give up everything. And I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do everything right. Like, day three or four, you're like, I got Lent coming up in like two months, so I'm going to hold off and wait on that. <laughs> Lent's funny, though. Ash Wednesday, that's always funny. I never knew that. I never knew why that actually had to happen. You know, you put some weird stuff on your forehead. <laughs> Go around looking like an idiot all day. And I'm Catholic, so like I've done this my entire life. And you wake up and it's always like you see somebody with ashes, you're like, crap, what have I not done yet? But I think of like something I haven't done, I'll give that up, and you never know to fulfill it. But I always New Year's resolution, that's always why I always try to, you know, focus on this. This is something that is an obvious thing that I gotta work on. It is. I, so I, you know, right near my house, it's really funny actually, is a plant fitness, and I drove by it for so long. Big signs on the window says, Judgment Free Zone, $10 a month. First of all, I don't like getting judged. Not, not like a big thing I'm involved in. I don't like people saying, hey, big guy. You know, big, yes, I don't like getting judged though. $10 a month, I can afford that, perfect. So for me, my idea was, I'm gonna go in to this New Year's resolution thing the right way, start in December, work out for the whole month, Get everybody to know me, become pals, rub shoulders with everybody, and then next thing you know, January comes by, I can judge everybody else. That was my plan. So I walk into the gym, I say, hey, I saw that sign out for $10 a month, gotta say, pretty impressed. Okay, so what do I have to do to sign up? They're like, oh, well, great, uh, welcome to Planet Fitness, do you have a coupon? And I was like, no. Uh, the sign out front didn't say $10 a month plus coupon. <laughs> so she's like, well, when you sign up on the non-sign-up days, you need that coupon to get the deal. I'm like, oh, what are the non-sign-up days? And what are the sign-up days? She goes, oh, it's the first and the last of every month. It was December 2nd. So I was really pissed. And I was like, okay, well, if I sign up today, how much is it going to cost me? She's like, $87. I'm like, this kind of sucks. Yeah, no, I'm going to be honest with you. That's just a shitty deal. It is. Yeah, 87 bucks, but, you know, it's $10 a month. Plus 87 on the sign-up fee, you kind of feel screwed from the start. So I was like, all right, I got three options. I can start in a year, or 354 days to be exact, start on December 1st, have this whole plan work out the right way, mark my calendar in advance, and show up on time. Or I could wait till January 1st and just be like every other gym wannabe. Or drop the $87, and since I'm not really good with my money, that's what I did. So I was like, all right, 87 bucks, boom, see you tomorrow. Because I didn't have my clothes on me or anything like that. So it was like, all right, I want to join your gym, and I'll be back tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> so it was great, because I walked out, and the next day I walked in, and I saw this girl signing up, too. And I'm like, idiot. <laughs> but it's <I'm> a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes, oh, uh, thanks for signing up, and here's your free t-shirt. And I was like, wait, I didn't get a free t-shirt. <laughs> So I walk up to her and I'm like, excuse me, hi, yeah, I'm Remy, signed up yesterday, 87, but, well, 97, because it's $10 a month, it's signed up. Remember that for you, went back and forth? Yeah, remember, no, now you got me, okay, yeah. Uh, I never got my free t-shirt. She's like, oh, well, that, and she was so great, I gotta give her so much credit, because she was like, oh, that's because we only have XLs. I'm like, what the fuck, really? Oh, my XLs? I'm like, first of all, I'll give you credit for knowing I'm not an XL, let alone too big for an XL. The extra large entails you are a larger person than most. When you are already assumed to be too large for most people, then that says a lot about you. So I said, well, that's great, because I'm a medium. Give me my fucking shirt. You know, so I gave me the shirt. I went in the locker room, tried it on, didn't fit, what do you know, and I haven't worn it since. But it's a pride thing. It's all about the pride. I also realized I wasn't most last Halloween. I mean, it is 2014, so I can talk about past events. Why talk about current issues, right? So last Halloween, I bought a Halloween costume. It was, where's Waldo? I thought, I'm like, okay, this guy's got glasses. 
I got glasses. <laughs> Ironic conversation starter. I'm buying this. I didn't even look at the size. Big mistake. Because the size said, it didn't say medium, large, extra large. No, it said one size fits most. I got home, tried it on, I realized I'm not most. That's what happened right away. It was incredible. So I tried it on, didn't fit, what do you know, poncho again. I had to like come up with a weird Halloween costume deal. But when you realize that, you have to say to yourself, okay, I gotta get myself in shape, I gotta run, I gotta do all the things I really, truly, honestly hate. So I, I decided to join the gym, I started working out, and I started training for this 5K. I ran my first 5K last week, true story. Thank you, thank you very much. Really, it's noticeable, isn't it? Like, I look so in shape right now. Uh, it took me so long to realize this isn't how most people look. But I finally decided, okay, start running. And the funny part is, I would tell people I was training for a 5K, and they're like, don't you just do those? Like, people can have better, like, I'm gonna run a 5K. That's what they do. And I was like, you know what, uh-uh, I'm training. I gotta put work and time and effort into this. So I, I trained for this 5K, and the best part was, what happened the night before the 5K, I never trained for it. My buddy was like, hey, we're going out tonight. I'm like, no, I'm not. I have a 5K tomorrow. He's like, dude, can I register? I'm like, yeah, you can register right there tomorrow. He's like, I'll run it with you. We go out tonight. I suffer to the thing with you. I'm like, that's how dumb I am. That's all it took. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, let's go out. Let's have fun. So a whole month of me working out, running, you know, like I'd run a mile, mile and a half, two miles. Oh, my God, I can run a 5K. I'm ready for this 5K, even though if you run on a treadmill and go to actual ground, lots different. Way different, especially when you're hungover. So, like, I went out. I didn't go to bed till like, 4 a.m. Big mistake. Woke up the next day feeling horrible. What do you know? Alcohol does that to you the next day. So I get up. I get dressed. The only thing motivating me to actually do this 5K is my friend who's going to have to suffer through that with me. This is how dumb I am. I get downstairs. I'm like, hey, bud, what, uh, so what's your like, pre-run ritual? What do you do? And he goes, I'm not going. <laughs> I hated him, and I still do, because I was like, well, I have work people committed to seeing me there. I've told people, I've told radio people, because I'm on the radio, too. I don't want to just talk about being on the radio. Have you noticed my voice? I'm on the radio. <laughs> uh, so I told people, I'm doing this race to 5K, to train it. Didn't train for a hungover 5K, so I get there. I felt like such an idiot, because I'm trying to act like I'm totally ready for this thing. Yeah, I feel like I'm over-exaggerating. Like, woo, where are we going? Half hour, shit. All right, uh, so... I noticed right before the race, though, the people that I knew were handing off their cell phones to this guy. And they're like, and I had headphones, I had to train with this music and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to be the, because it was my first 5K, I didn't know. So I was like, oh, I want to be the newbie. I was like, I was like an idiot. So I was like, here, hold my stuff. Race starts, they run ahead of me. I'm like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I got to run this 5K, hungover, no music, only hearing the sound of me almost throwing up the entire race. <laughs> it was miserable. But I finished it. I only stopped 97 times, so it worked out well. <laughs> Thank you. I know. It's like a, it was actually like a, like a brisk walk. But I work with a lot of great people. I do. They're funny. They're, uh, they all work out during lunch. They go running. They're all in shape. They run marathons, triathlons, anything with an on. And what's really good is that they always ask me, like, as if I'm an avid, like, I give up that avid runner vibe. You know, like, hey, Tyler, we're going to run at lunch right now. Like, no. And I don't want to go, not to be rude, but I don't want to go because my workouts are a lot of people's warm ups. So I don't want to be stopping them. What are we doing? And the other reason why they don't want to, I don't want to go with them is because they, they jog together. They jog in groups. And they talk the whole time. Now, first of all, I can barely jog, let alone run, let alone have a conversation while doing those two things. And then he goes like this. So, Kyle, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm going to Thank you, Tanner. Why are you asking me questions? So, yeah, it sucks. I hate doing that. And the other thing I hate doing is ordering food with these people. Now, I love my coworkers. I really do. They're really nice people. They're very awesome to work with. But the problem is, when I go to lunch with them, I've got an idea of what like, I like in lunch. Like, I'll have, if I'm ordering first, I'll be like, all right, I'll have the double bacon cheeseburger, side of fry, regular Coke. It's a Wednesday. I got time. So, they're, they go, and like, yeah, I'll have the tossed salad, uh, no cheese, dressing on the side. Can you give me half? Chicken, you gave me way too much chicken. Like, whoever complains about chicken in a salad, you gave me way too much stuff in there that I really enjoy. So, the worst is when they order that salad first, because then you're like, I was gonna order a big cheeseburger, I now have to come up with something. So, so then you're like scrambling to come up with something, like, hey, what do you, uh, what do you want? What do you want? Like, you know what? I was good, the usual. 
I'm gonna have a cheese salad. As if this is how I got to be this way, a toss salad, half chicken, dressing on the side. But I'm Colin O'Reilly, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>